Hey everybody, it is Mr. George, and today I am going to put together a video on the Byzantine Empire, which falls within uh, post-classical civilization. So when we refer to the Byzantine Empire, you know, really initially um, at its onset, it was the eastern half of the Roman Empire uh, upon the breakup of the Roman Empire. Okay. So Byzantine Empire really evolved from the from the eastern half of the Roman Empire. So as we kind of just back up a little bit, just to kind of give this context here, um, if you remember in 284, Diocletian decided to to split the empire into two as a result of the size. So we have the the western half over here, which has Rome. And then we have the eastern half on this side, which has which has Constantinople. Okay, the split has all sorts of consequences down the road, specifically when the church will split in 1054. So the the eastern half, again, is 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 kind of led by Constantinople, which really is considered New Rome. Um, and as the east ends up thriving. Uh, the West ends up declining. So Greek speaking East, Latin speaking West. So that also becomes a a language uh, difference. So as we talk about Constantinople, you know, prior to that it was Byzantium, um, and then we get Constantinople as a result of Constantine. If you remember Constantine going back, um, he was the one that put the crosses on the on the shields and as a result uh, we start to see the legitimacy of of christianity within the within the roman empire uh, this kind of gives us just a map here where we can see that that uh, istanbul in the present nation of turkey is the same city as constantinople um, and here we have the Black Sea, and this little area right here is referred to as the Bosporus Strait right here. Um, and then this one is also referred to as the Dardanelles. So this kind of, you know, connects the Black Sea with the Aegean, um, which is, you know, just east of Greece over here. So, and this just gives us kind of like a contemporary picture here. Um, all right, so I guess first individual that's of, of, of great significance within the Byzantine Empire is really Justinian. Justinian also, you know, had the, the, the lofty idea of, of kind of like recreating the Roman Empire by uniting East and West. Um, basically taking Constantinople, he was really mimicking Rome and really trying to create and beautify and bring the glory that Rome had to Constantinople, um, one of his one of his greatest achievements was the construction of the uh, significant church. Uh, it's called the Hagia Sophia, which is translated to Holy Wisdom. And here's a picture of that. As we'll get to when Constantinople falls to the Ottoman Turks, um, in addition to this church, but all churches end up being transformed into mosques as Islam takes uh, the Christian center of the of the Byzantine Empire and there's just a couple other images for you so I guess when we also talk about Justinian uh, one thing that we think of is his code his laws which really were laws that that were adopted from the Roman Empire okay um, and these laws were also used as a guide for, for contemporary, uh, contemporary law. So you know, Justinian within um, the, the Byzantine Empire, as well as after, is constantly having threats from outsiders. Okay, so within the Middle Ages, which you'll see in my other video on Middle Ages, you know, we have this constant survival. We also have Constantinople is, is very fortified. 
with 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 a series of walls, which makes it very very difficult to conquer. Um, the walls are referred to as the Theodosian walls. They come from Emperor Theodosius. Um, so one thing you'll see is that Constantinople initially was Christian. Okay, they worshipped in um, Christianity as did the West. Um, and as not just because of languages, but because of customs and because of geographical distance, we're now going to start to see this, this split within Christianity, within Christendom, where we have the Roman Catholic Church will be in the West, and we have the uh, Eastern Orthodox in the East. Okay, um, and part of this is because in each of these um, these spaces, you know, when we had the Roman Empire, we had an emperor in the West, and then in the East, there's also another emperor. So two emperors, two areas. Uh, we're now starting to see this this drifting uh, between this this East and West. So if we, if we want to just kind of look at some of the some of the comparisons between the two churches, and this again, this split really, you know, took place in 1054, but it really the 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 beginnings of these changes began, you know, uh, right after Charlemagne was crowned uh, emperor uh, by Pope Leo uh, around 800 um, A.D. So this just kind of gives us again some of the differences between Greek Orthodox uh, in the East and Roman Catholic, uh, Roman Catholicism in the, in the West. So again, this, this kind of gives us some like background information here. Um, what's happening in this time period, again, is that Christianity is spreading at this time. And Christianity is getting strength. We are now starting to see these popes that are now looking at their power as not just religious authority, religious power, but also some political power. And they're also using the term, um, you know, their power to excommunicate, which basically kicks you out of the church um, as one of their tools to be able to to extend their extend their power. You know, and simultaneously we have these kings who have political power who are really looking to to have some religious power and authority, um, as we've seen, religion is used as a uniting force and a way of bringing people, bringing people together. So again, we have this split that takes place, um, you know, and this takes place over the course of a hundred of years, um, where in 1054 is when we have this schism or this, this split. And then as we kind of fast forward, you know, uh, in another video in the Middle Ages, we'll look at the Crusades, okay, which has the Christians and the Muslims, um, you know, fighting against each other. Um, that also incorporates the Byzantine Empire. And what's going to happen is we're going to see the, the downfall of the Byzantine Emperor, I'm sorry, the Byzantine Empire, which really takes place in 1453. So the empire lasts about a thousand years, okay, which is similar to Rome. Uh, Rome Repu Republic was 500 years. The Roman Empire was around 500 years. So the Byzantine Empire lasted about about a thousand years, uh, and takes us really through the you know not just the European Middle Ages, but post classical civilization um, at this time. And then we have the the Ottoman Empire, which kind of solidifies Islam um, in this in this region of the world, um, which has continued through through today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.